Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Our interview with Dr. Kevin Lehman continues. Doctor, um, the middle school uh, years. The perils of middle school. Very confusing to kids, very confusing to parents. It's kind of a, a something you have to maneuver through. It sounds to me like you're telling us to embrace it. Embrace I, the crazy. I think you have to. You know, on page 295 of my book, I put my freshman report card. Should I check? From Williamsville, which is now South High School. <laughs> and uh, I've been telling people for years that I graduated fourth and bottom of my class. And I'm sure people think that I'm stretching that just a little bit. He's telling the well, truth. Back in those days, uh, VP was very poor. P was poor. <laughs> F was fair. G was good. And E was excellent. Well, my, uh, I mean, I flunked everything. There's one six-week period where I flunked everything. Got a final exam in grade in algebra of 22. Took Latin five times. Passed it twice. Uh, one time when I passed as a freshman, it was only through the courtesy of a gay kid named Carl Maz, who was kind enough to lower his left shoulder. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes. So there's the credentials of oh, Dr. No, Kevin no. Lehman. <laughs> but, you know, it's a weird time. But I, I seriously, I think one of the best tips in this book is how, parents, do you get your kid to be grateful? How do you get your kid involved in other people's lives servicing other people, and here's the kicker, without any money coming their way. Without any money from mom and dad coming their way. Or the person they're helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's people in our neighborhood who need help shoveling snow or mm -hmm. raking leaves or mowing grass, whatever the season might be. There's people around you who could use some help. And there's nothing better for kids because kids feel like they're the center of the universe. On top of that, parents are so, I'll use a clinical term, stupid, that they rear their kid to make the kid feel like they're the center of the universe. Well, if you're a person of faith, for example, okay, and you believe in Almighty God, where is there room for Almighty God in this kid's life if they feel like they're the center of the universe? So getting kids to go out, service other people without having anything back gives them what? Great satisfaction of knowing they helped other people because kids today are hedonistic from the get-go. They're enabled by their parents Parents don't want the kids to fail at anything. Talk to anybody who's successful. Just pick a name like Phil Arno, and I'll bet you you'll find failure in his life. Anybody who's successful has a plethora of failures in their life. You know me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're looking at the, the Lehman. You know, that L doesn't stand for Lehman. It's, you know, for a lot of years. My high school counselor, God rest his soul, told me, he said, Lehman, with your grades and your record in this school, I couldn't get you into reform school. Oh. And he had reason to say that, by the way. So uh, I, again, it goes back to relationships. And uh, I mentioned Williamsville High School. When you get close to death like I am, they start giving you awards. They give you honorary doctorate degrees and all this. But I got a call from uh, Williamsville High School. and. Uh, they wanted to put me on their wall of fame. And I said, say what? <laughs> and yeah, we want to put you on the wall of fame. I said, I'm coming for that. <laughs> and my mother lived to be 95. She lived down in Jamestown in a retirement center. And I got to drive up. <laughs> and it was, we had the best conversation. I said, Ma, we fooled a few people, didn't we? She said, oh, honey, I am so proud of you. After her death, we found pictures that she would take with her little camera of me on Oprah, Phil Donahue, all the shows I've done over the years. She was so proud of her kids. And so we're talking, and I said, remember the night the cops brought me home? She said, oh, I do. But you were such a good boy. <laughs> And, and so what I'm saying to parents today, yeah, there's times you want to send your kid, FedEx them to a far off land, uh -huh. but you love them despite it, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, it goes back to relationships. I, I noticed in, uh, in your, um, what is it you have, the, the Ten Commandments uh, oh, to yeah. parents yeah. From, from middle schoolers, uh, it's okay to let them fail, yeah. and I'm hearing a lot of that from you about your life and your history and your past is let them fail, it's well, good. I've said for years, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know that sucker didn't get there by himself. Mm -hmm. He had some people who helped him along the way. Ask yourselves, who believed in you, Phil Arno? 
And who believed in you, Kim Piazza? And I'll tell you, you're not going like this. You're lucky if you got one, if you got two, if you got three, you're triple blessed. So those people who just loved you anyway. And so that's what has to come through during these years because these kids are getting ripped. And check this out. The one person your kid does not want to be in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade is guess who? Themself. Because they look up at everybody else. And because, you know, the simple pimple becomes Mount St. Helens. Everything's exaggerated. Mm -hmm. You never let me do this. How come you got her that? You didn't get me anything. My stock answer, because, oh, because your dad and I love her so much more than we love you. Put some humor in it. I used to say because I'm mean. But anyway, <laughs> That's just as good. <laughs> but, but anyway, let's talk about the Lehman Academy because oh, yeah. you've got this fabulous school. I mean, what, what you're writing about, you're practicing what you preach. Yeah, we built a school, uh, started over a cup of coffee. A guy said, Kevin, would you ever like to have a school? I said, sure, but how could I ever have a school? He says, do a charter school. Well, we have a charter school. It was just voted by the Arizona Daily Star Reader's Choice, mm -hmm. the best school in Tucson. Arizona, best charter school. We have about 530 kids, K through six. We're going to K-8 next year and building a high school, we hope, putting them all over the country. But high expectations, kid takes Spanish in kindergarten, Latin in the third grade, sixth grade, critical thinking, logic, and it rocks and rolls. And I was talking to the parents the other night at a parent meeting, and I said, you know what? Your kid goofs up, we'll take care of it. And if it goes beyond that, and we can't handle it for every reason, expect a call from our school. But you'll be surprised who's on the phone. It won't be one of us. It'll be your son or daughter saying, you need to come and pick me up right now because I don't know how to behave myself. So where's the tennis ball? The tennis ball life is in his court, in her court. And we have high expectations for the kids. I'm trying to get New York media to come out and film the school because they won't believe how attentive and how well those it's kids working. Yeah. yeah, how do we get that school out here? Well, you know the trouble with New York is the <laughs> tax system. Yeah, here. I know the trouble with New York. The guy that built my school built uh, one down in Brooklyn. Yeah. And uh, a lot of hurdles getting to school in New York. I'd love to have one right here in Western mm -hmm. New York because I love sweet corn and beef on weck and I'm a, I'm a Williamsville Buffalo boy for good. Yeah, well. Western so what would it take to get uh, a school like that here? A bunch of people who's, who would rally around because every state, you have to write a, a charter. It's about a 500-page document. It's a huge amount of work. But every state educational system wants to say, see, okay, where's the interest here in, in Western New York for a school like that? I'd love to have one. It's awesome. We have people who've been paying <coughs> nine, twelve grand a year to send their kids to private school. They're saving $36,000 a year sending them to my school that's F-R-E-E. -E. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. How long did it take you to get this school up on its feet? From cup of coffee, mm -hmm. 18 months. Seriously? Built. Mm. And we're building again. Is that because of the state you're in? Is that, is that where you are in the country that allows that to happen? Because that's shocking. Well, it's fast, but Arizona, you know, you have beautiful climate, so you don't have climate delays and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it's just been wonderful. I'll tell you, for a kid who graduated fourth and bottom of his class, to drive by and see this big building with the Lehman Academy of Excellence, <laughs> to me, it's a sign that God had a great sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. allowed that one to come up. Yeah. You know, and I think, um, I think it's also maybe a little bit of a message for parents that it, your child doesn't have to be number one in the class, doesn't have to be a straight A student. Your child, you know, that those are good things. Those are things to be proud of, but it's okay to pass, right? It's okay to, to get the high school diploma and move on from move on from there. You know, I quote myself in a book I wrote called uh, Have a New Kid by Friday. I think it's the best line I ever came up with, and it's this. An unhappy child is a healthy child. And there's times your son or daughter parent has to be unhappy. Why? Because they talk back to you, they use foul language, they ragged on their sister or brother, they were disrespectful. There's a litany of things that could end up having your kid unhappy. It's not the end of the world. Let the kid come to you. Let the kid learn how to apologize and say, hey, I'm sorry, Mom and Dad, I shouldn't have done that or said that. Well, well, on that unhappy note. <laughs> <laughs> no, on that happy, unhappy note. We're going to come back and talk about cruising with Dr. Lehman.